Hey guys, come on in, come on in. My name is Thomas Brush. I make indie games for a living. Today we're gonna make indie games for a living. I'm really excited to jump into Unity and we're gonna work on a father and we're gonna my talk. Name is Thomas Brush. Hold on one sec. I make indie games. Oh my goodness, what? Oh. Apparently I was watching myself while I started. Okay. We're gonna jump inside of Unity and we're going to to discuss why it's okay to mimic certain games and kind of copy some of the great elements of great games. Before we jump into Unity, I do want to let you guys know that today is actually a really, really important and big day. Um, I don't do these sale events often. Last time we did this was last year. 2D Art Pro is 50% off today. This is my brand new program. Well, it's new from last year. It's my newest program. Uh, newest bigger program. I had a small one I launched in December, but this one <laughs> is my uh, 2D Art Pro course. There's only 200 seats available. It's 50% off and just click below if you want to enroll. Now, the reason why I wanted to share this really, really quick if you're on the fence about it. The reason why this is more, I guess, valuable than something like a Udemy course or a Skillshare course is because you're getting information from somebody who's doing it currently. I make video games currently, I run a studio, I have a team, and we make games for a living, and that's our job, okay? So I teach everything that I feel is required for you to do the same. So my, my bigger program, Full-Time Game Dev, teaches you everything you need to know about marketing and entrepreneurship. 2D Art Pro is everything that you need to know to make your game pop, to make it sell. And it's not geared towards people who are super, super popular or who are super talented. It's geared toward everybody. People like me who weren't born with the best skills for sketching or painting, but still want to make breathtaking 2D art. So if you're interested, it's 50% off and you're also going to get, for this sale event, you're going to get my brand new course, Pixel Art Pro, totally free. This course is about how to do pixel art as well. So you can see we have a ton of different styles that we're learning. So click below. This is just seven days only and there's only 200 slots available. So if you're interested, check it out. All right, guys, let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's quickly talk about how I'm replicating Half-Life in this game. I actually hired a contract worker, um, his name is Adam, and I hired him to do some level designs for me. These are our level designs, and I told him specifically, I said, Adam, play Half-Life and play Half-Life 2 and basically pretend you're making a Half-Life game because I love the level design of the Half-Life games and we want to mimic that for father. So I guess I just want to sh share with you that you know, this is my third commercial release and I'm still taking inspiration from games. And so I highly recommend that you guys do the same. If you're, if you're making games as an indie developer, specifically as an indie developer, this is especially relevant. If you're doing that, you have a very small budget, you have a limited time, a limited team. So make sure that when you're doing something, you pretty much know it's going to work. Okay. So that's why it's really important to take inspiration from very popular games. <laughs> And that's about all I wanted to share in that regard. You can see we have spiders, we have uh, vents just like in Half-Life 1, we have platforming here. That's totally fine to take those elements and basically say Father is kind of a, a love letter to Half-Life. I think that's totally fine. So let's jump into Unity and start working on these level designs, okay? So what we've got here is I've actually made a few optimizations here to this map. And you can see here, this is how our map looks. It's culling out right now, currently. But the optimate, there's, a, there's several optimizations that we've done here to ensure that the frame rate is speeding up, okay? Some of you mentioned static batching. I'm pretty sure that everything's 
optimized there. I'll probably hire a porting studio to clean that up. But we've also done amb uh, not ambient occlusion, but occlusion here. And when you click bake, the camera will basically call out what it doesn't need. We've got LOD groups and also what I've done here is I've downloaded a script online and uh, it's called the item activator object. It's actually um, a YouTube video that I found. What this script does is it on start it finds all of the game objects and puts them into a list and then on every object that you want to disappear there's a little script that just checks its location. Once that location goes outside of the distance from the player, which is currently set to 100, it will disable the object. This is relevant because currently, look at this, we've got a ton, a ton of physics objects. A ton of physics objects. And they're sort of just waiting and sleeping. And that's causing just a lot. It's Well, they're also being rendered because they're not static, right? So what I'm doing here is basically disabling any object that is really far away from the camera. So if we hit play here, generally, this is especially true when I'm not live streaming, but <laughs> if I hit play here, it's actually gonna speed up significantly, okay? So we've got a pretty good fa frame rate, way better than we had last week. If we open up our stats here, you can see we're at 50 frames per second over here when you look this way. Last week it was around 30 and below. Okay, and we've even got spiders here, so basically uh, the game is a lot faster, right? So that's really great. Um, a lot of you mentioned Thomas do async loading for portions of the level. I haven't seen that necessary yet. Um, the, uh, the occlusion and the LOD groups and also disabling objects has really helped. So I'm actually fine currently with the way things are going. We're in the editor and we're live streaming and we're looking at almost 60 frames per second, just about. If this was a build and I wasn't live streaming, it would probably be something like um, 120. Although I think the build is actually capping at 60. So I'm unsure exactly what Unity will do there, but all that said, things are much, much faster. We've also got, just giving you guys a quick update here, we've also got new sounds from Hector. Hector is Hector Rodriguez is our sound designer. So we've currently got this new sound for the doors. Really great sound. Very pretty. Really good job, Hector. We've also got the enemies able to sort of hide in corners. So you probably wouldn't see him and you'd just run in and he'd surprise you. Pretty cool. So that works great. And we've also got new sounds here. Okay. So I really, really like these sounds here. We've got a few issues I'll show you over here. We're making our way through the level and we're gonna start, um, I'm gonna show you where we're gonna place some keys. This I need to put back. This is a great, it's supposed to be in front of this, but crouching works great. Whoopsie. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get my Zevia here. So we do have a problem and we were, I was trying to find this out last week after our live stream. Is there no ambient occlusion? I'm not seeing any. Hmm. Um, one of the problems I had last week that I found out is we can't put the spiders in these canals here. They just don't know where they are. They, they, they're not really, the nav mesh just isn't working. Um, that is also broken. That needs to be, that needs to be fixed. Okay, so let's talk about this first key, okay? The first key that you collect is down here And there needs to be some enemies here. The problem is we haven't made those enemies yet. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about those. We're just gonna worry about placing keys for this live stream. And here's the key. Uh-oh, that portrait's gone. Let's see where she went. Let's go to our player here. The portrait is gone. I wonder why that is. Looks like we have an issue. Ah, yes, portraits didn't import properly. We need to write that down. So it looks like, so you know, you have issues all the time. Everything, things always sort of pop up slowly. Um, portraits are, have disappeared. Okay, I'll write that down really quick so that we can fix that today. Uh, grates are for some reason using gravity or like not kinematic. Um, 
they should be kinematic. And let's see here. Let's see if we can figure out why the portraits are missing. Painting maybe? Okay, there they are. Combined mesh. Let's see if we can find the painting just really quick here and see what's going on. We have one there, but some of them are disabled. Interesting. Could it be the disable script is causing some problems? <gasps> I think it might be. Yep. The disable script is officially causing problems. Yay. Hooray. All right. So the disable script is causing problems. We're going to have to look at this. I'm not sure why they would be causing problems, but whatever. Okay. So you collect the key. There it is. Now we have it in the top left-hand corner and we can take this all the way to the beginning of the level, open up a door and do a puzzle and get the gravity gun. Okay. So let's go ahead and just work on the keys right now. I think this disable script is probably going to be an easy fix. So I've got that listed, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and move forward with adding some more keys. So let's see here. Let's go to our map. So the way that a studio might do it, uh, the, you know, there's obviously a ton of ways to do this, but the way we're doing it is I just have a contract worker lay out the level design and then we just take a look at the level design and follow the rules and put it into the game. Okay. So right now we've got all this fixed. This is the second floor. After you get through the library, we're going to move for, through here. Closet acts as a recovery room. So there's going to be health and stuff in there. I'm not going to worry about that currently. All we want to worry about is we have two enemies here and then we have a key in here. <laughs> And he has a key. Okay, this door is blocked as well. Okay, so I know where this is, so I think. <laughs> so let's put this mansion dresser. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this is the classroom. And right here, let's turn off the lighting. It's really dark, there we go. You go through here all the way to here, okay? So this is going to be blocked, all right? So there's the dresser. We're gonna put the dresser right here in front of the door. This is going to be set to negative 90, right? And this door is going to be blocked. So we're just going to drag this over just like that. And you're going to have to use the gravity gun to move it from the door, okay? Now, this door here, all you got to do is go to door. We need to say it, uh, let's see here, it doesn't utilize a key. This door utilizes a key, okay? So this one, we just need to be able to get out without you know, going back through. So what all we need to do is just make sure this door is set up properly. So let's go ahead and put the jammed object in place. So what I'm gonna do is lock this here. I'm gonna take this jammed object, this mansion dresser. Um, I believe this, uh, let's, let's actually unlock that. Okay, it looks like we need to move put dresser, the actual dresser, not the parent object into the field because the parent object doesn't have any colliders on it. And that's what we're checking for. When the door loses the collider, once the collider has gone, the door will be enabled to open. So it's jammed and let's go ahead and lock this. And then I'm going to take this dresser here and just move dresser, put it right there. So it's jammed. And then also we want to make sure the dialogue runner is playing the right dialogue. So this one is door locked. Let's set it to door door jammed. Obviously there's ways we could clean that up, make that automated, but we're not gonna use jammed objects that much. And we're only gonna really do them for interiors. All right. Let's keep on keeping on guys. So it looks like that key is going to be we could call it a blue key. I think that's fine. Um, so let's just do a blue key. We're gonna, what I like to do is I like to start simple with my games and just get more and more and more complicated as we move along. The reason I don't like to start complicated and have like a, a an iron gate key and a, I don't know, a, an owl key is because things are always changing. And so what I've found is, um, I like to start pretty simple and low key because I'm going to change it anyway. I know me, I know my personality, but at this point I'm going to change it. So why not go ahead and just start simple? So that is the wrong key. Let's see if we can find the right key. 
Orange door, purple door. Okay, I think it's in our actual prefabs here in, in Father. Is that it? Nope. Gosh. Door key variant. Is that it? That's it. So that is our door key right there. Okay. I'm not going to put it on the table because I know that the player is able to get on the table. So we're going to put the key or the, where is it? Door key variant. There's so many variants, but right now I'm not going to worry about it. So we're going to put that there. And this key is going to be, let's lift it up just a tad. This key is going to be the blue key. All right. So if we go to our key, uh, key pickup, all right here, yes, okay. The drop down reveals that we can do blue key, okay. So let's make sure in the key manager that that is correct, okay. So there's key manager. Yep, the blue key is set up. It's consumable. The orange key is set up, and we've already used that, okay. So this light color is going to change to blue based on what door key it is, okay. So we've got the key collectible. Now let's go ahead and go through this door here. This one right here is gonna be locked, okay? So let's go to our map here. Looks like we have a locked door here. And then it takes you to these two rooms here, which, what do they do? They really don't do anything. What? That's not good. Do they have a purpose? I sure hope so. Because what's the point? Let's uh, go to the game and take a look and see what's going on. Um, that's the exit. We got to figure out what's going on here. You have to go from the western balcony. Railings between them are broken indicating that you can jump across. The gap is too long to jump through. You'll need to grab an object with the gravity gun that's long enough to get across. The gap between the two will have spikes at the bottom. However, the spikes are not too far down. If you drop long enough, you can get across. We don't have that currently with our level design, so we're gonna have to retrofit it. Have windows showing outside. You'll also have a glowing s sign that points to the right. This is locked, okay. Um, yeah, it's locked for, okay, so you have to jump across. Study room has access to balcony. Okay, you go across and then it takes you here to the third floor. Okay, so it takes you to the third floor. Let's make sure that this is true. I think this is important before I start laying things out. So let's make this locked door um, locked, okay? So let's go to door rounded variant, there we go. And then we're gonna say the key required is the blue key, okay? And it is locked, all right? That's about all we need to do. So let's go ahead and if we can, I sure hope this doesn't cause a problem. Um, let's go to the player, or the control player controller. And I'm gonna try and move him over All right, so there's the player. I'm gonna see what I can do. If I move him over here, I believe, yep, yep, yep. And then over here, let's hit go to F here and see where he's at. Okay, we need to move him up just a little bit. Hopefully this will load properly. Yeah. Okay, let's hit play and see what we get. Good, okay. So there's the library, guys. So let me show you where we're at, okay? So this is the library right here, and we're actually right here looking out at the library. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our way to that classroom and get that key, okay? Man, those paintings are just gone. All the paintings on the walls have disappeared. You have to figure that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our way through. Broke so fast. That was weird. I am not advanced in scripting at all. I'm actually a very poor scripter. But that's why I hire people to help me out. 
oh, so Thomas doesn't make games solo. No, I just passed that phase. <laughs> Eventually you get out of that phase where you're like, okay, I wanna make a bigger game. I'm not gonna do it completely solo. Most of the time that would be foolish, all right? All right, so now we're in a bathroom. Okay. That's a little weird. What happened here? There's a lot of things that just got confusing just now. What? And also, what's going on here? Looks like those need to be static. A lot of these need to be static. Okay, they're not baked. Okay. Just gotta fix that. Let me let me write that down really quick. Uh, what would you call that? The central fork, tall fortress area needs baking. Okay. All right. So it looks like what we just did there is that actually took us through to here. What's it? Okay. So we need to figure out where that room is. Um, let's go back and try and figure out where we are. There's uh, this room here. Okay, that's the blocked door. Okay, let's hit pause here and try and figure out what's going on here. Um, let's see here, there we are. So is there a grate in here? Yes, okay. So if we go the other way and go through, okay, so if we had gone to the right, it would have taken us there. The problem is, let's see here. Okay, so this room, what is this area for? I guess there's no point. Hmm. So there might be something to like grab in here to use for this puzzle. I don't feel like there's much going on here. So let's go ahead and jump right back in and see if we can go back into the right area. I may block it off or something because currently it's like you can get super lost and I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Maybe it is, uh, we'll see. Hey Jason, and by the way, Jason, thanks for joining the program today. It really meant a lot. I saw your name on the, the student um, sheet and it really, really meant a lot. So welcome to the program. All right, let's make our way in. You you know, you guys, you can keep a game game's gameplay very basic and just add a lot of decals and great music. And generally speaking, you can get away with a very simple game. Add some cool enemies and you're good to go. Let's grab the key. All right, we got the blue key. All right, the drawers are in the way, which is, you know, understandable, but now we're able to get through. See? So those those are being fixed by Gordon currently. Um, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's take a look at this blue key here. Whoa. The baking is so effed. Okay, well, that's... I'm not worried. All right. So now we're in this area here. Definitely needs a title. Okay, so we can definitely do that. Five, add title to the blue area. And I may remove all of the lighting in this area and make it a creepy dark area where there's like no lights and it's sort of boarded off. Okay, yeah, there's definitely a problem. There's definitely a problem with the disable script solution we had created. So these are our bathrooms. The, okay, no, 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 those aren't bathrooms, okay. So that door is gonna be locked we need a roof here. I may just cover it with tiles and call it a day. And we need to be able to jump across this. Isn't that gonna be fun? So we have to get some kind of long object. But the problem here, the problem here is that we're able to shoot it off and we don't want that. So I may consider, oh man, let's, let's see if we can figure this out. I may consider just a platforming solution like this. And that's that, you know? 
Um, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see. Those glasses, maybe we can make glass rooms, but I don't know if this currently is gonna work for our for the game. By the way, it feels so empty because all of the objects are removed. All of the objects because of that disable script. So don't stress. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's fine. I'm fine with that. So let's go ahead and lock that door and uh, or maybe even just block it. Just block it. Yeah, the rooms are gonna have plenty of lore. The, this game is gonna be, the principles of this game are three tiered principles, or three pillars. First, great atmosphere, music, and art, right? So just, it's, it's a beautiful, polished, atmospheric game. Two, story building, just reading journal entries, talking to your daughter on the walkie-talkie, talking to characters. And then three, great enemies, great enemies. If we could do that, we've got a great game, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and head on over to where we were. It was over here, right? Okay, balcony and balcony. So let's think here, my friends. It's not gonna be perfect, but let's take a look and see what this uh, little puzzle element here was. This is a locked door entirely. Um, I don't think I want it to be locked. I think I just want it to be blocked. So let's go ahead and block it, all right? So it's gonna be blocked with a sideboard, okay? So let's go over here, let's select the sideboard, and let's just drag it in here, blocked. See that? That's about all you need to do in terms of placing the object. Then you just um, select this and you say it's jammed. You lock this and then you drag it on over. So this sideboard has a box. There we go. Let's double check though. Yep, we're good. Okay. And then finally, what you do is select this friend here and you go to the script, the dialogue runner, and you just set it to be not the locked dialogue, but the, the jammed dialogue. So that's jammed, and the only way to get in is over here. Now, the problem here is this, these walls, I'm not a huge fan of. I kinda wanna wish, I kinda wanna wish <laughs> that these guys here, mansion wall tall, that those we're over here, so let's see if it actually works. So the theory is we should be able to get away with adding four of these here, um, so that you can see outside, right? But the question is, okay, what's it look like on the inside? Hey, it looks good. I'm not a master of snapping here, so let's try and work with this. I may have to, yeah, I'm not the best at this, guys. Okay, hold V, right? And then you just sort of flippy did all this. I'm trying to remember how to do it. I think that's it. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Is that it? No. I'm I'm terrible at designing these levels. That's why I have Felipe doing it. Let's see here. Hmm. Oh, is it up here? Um, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going to turn off snapping. Maybe I'll have Felipe come in and clean it. I probably will have him come and clean it. Yeah, so we just want like four. Um, four of these here. Okay. Okay. So let's go to perspective mode. Huh. They're kind of like off center. Well, well, well. Okay, I'm not gonna make it perfect, guys, but generally this is the idea. We'll probably get some baking issues. Definitely gonna get some baking issues, but 
what ifs. All right, so now we should be able to see out the windows, okay? That's that's the goal. Let's see how it looks over here. Fine by me. Not perfect, but fine. All right. So that's all set up, ready to go. This we could probably remove. Although I think I'm just gonna, maybe just one of them, you know? Hmm. Okay, no, we're gonna have to keep it. That's fine, okay, so that's good. Then let's go ahead and lock this door here. And by the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below and download that, it's my treat to you. And also, if you're interested in learning 2D art from me, um, I've made over, uh, let's see, I've made about three, three, three 2D games, really I've done about six, but two major commercial releases and then I did one bigger one for PewDiePie. Um, so I know what I'm doing with 2D art, it's my job. And so I teach that at my program called 2D Art Pro. It's currently 50% off and you're also gonna get my brand new course, Pixel Art Pro. There's only 200 slots available. So if you guys wanna join the program, click below to take a look at it and see if it's something for you. I have a ton of students on my bigger program. I have over 3000 students on my bigger program. And so this is a uh, more smaller uh, focused one. And uh, the community there is definitely growing. Okay guys, so that's locked and ready to go. Um, it's gonna be blocked from the other side. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other portion of this design here. So we've got this area here. What's that? What is that? What does that mean? Let's go to the legend. Starting point. Checkpoint. Ah, it's a checkpoint. Okay. Ah, oh, man. I kind of want to make it a platforming. Wouldn't it be so cool if it was platforming? Like if there was a uh, something you had to jump on over here, or like wooden planks. but we're not gonna worry about that now. That's something we can talk about after we finish this level. There's so many things to add. Right now I just wanna have the core done, very basic core. Level construction is done in Unity um, and the, the modular assets were created in Blender. I don't construct my levels. I'm an art director right now. Um, so a lot of this is just done by Felipe and Adam. Okay, so we have this stairwell. Let's let's double check and make sure that this exists. I, I have my doubts. It doesn't. Let's see here, hold on. Okay, it goes over here. Oh yes, there it is, third floor, bang. Goes up to third, ooh, wow. So we do have a wonderful third floor. That is the exit, I believe. Let's take a look here. Let's turn on the third floor. Yay, good, there's the exit. That takes us to the exit. So what are these? It requires a key. I'm so confused. Let's turn on floor three route. So you're gonna get a key from the second floor. You go down, what? So you have to get to the balcony through a broken window. We're not gonna do that. Route three continues on, wait, what? On floor three. So let's go back to the second floor. So this is an area where there's a key. Okay, so I think it just goes down. Let's take a look. Nothing crazy guys here. Okay, so that's the exit. There we go. And then you go over here. You keep on keeping on, go through here and right here is the third key. 
Okay, so Felipe just made it so that there's not a third floor or a second floor. So we're gonna grab the final key, all right? So currently, we don't have to have a blue key or an orange key prefab. So again, let's go to our keys. Gosh, I have so many prefabs here. Let's just type in key variant. It's, I think it's called door key, there it is, variant. I'm gonna drag that, put it right here. So this is where the final key is, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and call this one the, uh, I think green key is fine. So we collect that and then we make our way over here and this is the exit point, okay? We're not gonna worry about creating a beautiful exit. Um, that's just the final point of this level. And if the doors are gonna open, it's gonna be blank. But I will feel really good knowing the key portion of this level is done, all right? So this is going to be, remember, the green key. It is locked and then I'll open up and take us to the next level, which is going to be, um, it's called, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a cliffs level. You're on the, these, the edge of cliffs. Hey, Epsilon says, I Thomas, I watch your videos and I'm always in a bad mood, but then I get out of a bad mood when I watch your videos. That's great. Okay, let's see here, guys. So the keys are done, actually. It's funny, it's, it's, that's way less complicated than I was expecting, which is awesome. So now we really need to start uh, thinking about um, placing a lot of just flourishes. So I'm gonna get my intern, Gordon, to do that. But I'm gonna worry about placing enemies, all right? Before we do that, we need to figure out what the F's going on with this script here, which is basically causing items to destroy and to disappear, okay? So right here, disable it far away, is causing some issues, okay? So what we're gonna do, all this does is it adds it to the list. This right here is the item activator. And all it does is it sets the object to false or true, okay? So right off the bat, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Unity and we're just gonna see if disabling these actually allows me to see various objects, okay? So let's go ahead and hit play and take a look. All right, so the game is so much more full because we have all these objects now, okay? So that's great, but you can see the frame rate is significantly slower because all of the objects spawned. Let's make sure that they are not set to kinematic. They're not, okay, good. So the game is just significantly sl slower because we have a ton of objects that have rendered, uh, dynamic objects, you know? I kind of want a little platforming puzzle here to have to get onto these, wouldn't that be cool? And then you sort of fall over onto that side. There's so many things you can do with 3D games. That's why I love making 3D games. Um, okay, so that's causing an issue. The next thing we wanna do is, well, what if we do this? At what point do the objects suddenly start disappearing? That's the next question. Let's hit play and take a look. So those guys have not been disappeared. So we're good. So it's almost as, as if the player, once they're at a starting position, there's no problem. Hmm. What about over here? What's going on here? Yeah, this room doesn't look like crap anymore. We also need to do a lot of title triggers. Anyway, so let's take a look and see. Let's go down here and see if there's issues with this script. What we're looking for is objects just remaining disappeared. So there's a lot down here, pretty cool. So that's working. Hmm. So let's go on down here. Oh my goodness. Well, that's broken. Maybe I need to move it over here. Nope, 
So strange. That doesn't work. I wonder why. Plenty of issues to work through. I'm not upset. I'm totally fine. <laughs> Let's see if this works. So the door blocked is causing an issue. Missing reference. The object, uh, game object has been destroyed and you are trying to access it. Huh. Okay, so we got some issues with this locked door. Uh, let's see here. Let's go down here and take a look. Is this locked? I don't think it is. No, we're good there. Hmm. What about over here? Everything's still in its proper place. So it looks like the object activator script is working currently. Hmm. Well, look at that. Okay. Yeah, there's a few issues we're gonna need to iron out with the, all these objects you can move around because sometimes they just appear in random places which, you know, isn't good. And they fall over too. So I need to set them to kinematic at default by default. I wonder if I could set them all to be, hmm, we'll, we'll talk about it. But right now we need to figure out why these doors are still blocked. That's weird. Cause I wasn't having that issue earlier. Okay, well, let's take a look. Let's uh, head on over there. Let's find the player. He is over here. And let's figure out why these doors are blocked. So if we go to mansion door here, the jammed object is sideboard, okay? Which is right there. And it's currently the object itself, incorrect. It should be this one. So that's what's going on with those two doors. So it has nothing to do with, with the, the object disabler script that we recently implemented. So we're good there. All I need to do is select that sideboard, drag in box 021, and the same is true over here, and we should be good. Now the drawers are remaining in place because me and uh, Gordon are currently working on that, but I'm not too worried. This one, darn it, we do have problems. Where's box 021? Ah, yes, wrong, wrong, wrong. So we, what we need to do is select this here, select, uh, whoops, whoops, select, um, Wait, 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 what am I doing? There we go. And yep, it's selecting sideboard one, which is incorrect. So what we need to do is just drag box 021, there it is, and that is uh, this right here, okay? So now when we move that, it's gonna open up that door. So we're good there. Uh, the next thing I wanna do, let's remove this piece of crap here. We don't need it. Um, the next thing we want to do is try and figure out what's going on with the object disabler script. Because if you guys can remember, things started dis like not actually reappearing. Remember, the disabler script is meant to disable things super far away. But we're just having problems where the uh, objects are just disappearing randomly. And we, so we need, to, we need to do some research and really dig into what's going on here, okay? What's that? It's a post-processing volume, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our character. He's right here. We're gonna bring him, there he is. We're gonna bring him back to the original location where all the spiders are. Maybe move him over here. Whoopsie. All right. So let's just put him right here. Hit play and take a look. Okay, so let's see what happens as we continue to play our game. Maybe it, maybe it has to do with a very simple null reference exception, you know? So that, let's hope that that's what it is. So let's, uh, that wasn't the object disabler script. When you saw that thing pop into existence, that was actually an LOD group. So I'm gonna move that over there. Let's jump on in. Oh my goodness, the drawers moved with it. No, they didn't, okay. All right, so let's keep finding, okay, so I feel like there should be a picture there, but there's no longer a picture there. There's a picture here, 
Let's go up here and take a look. No, we're good there. We also need to make, let me write this down really quick. Number six, make sure all doors that are in are inactive on the map are actually inactive because currently <laughs> currently if we go up here and we we can open up this door and we definitely don't want that that's horrifying so we need to make sure that stuff like that's disabled so we'll probably scrub through the whole map in just a second to do that okay this door is should be jammed good okay so let's see maybe go down here and figure out what's going on here that's weird I don't know why that's happening. I'm not gonna worry about it. This table's gone. So weird. So that's not correct. Um, I feel like what I want to do. There's a. Uh, yep. Look at this. Nothing showing up. I feel like what I want to do is there is a script that I got from this guy. Um, so let's go ahead and find it really quick. And the script is this one, item object activator. Let's see if there's a readme or anything like that. There's not, man, why didn't you save this, Thomas? Disable object if far away from camera, unity item activator. I feel like that's gonna give us a, a good YouTube video for that. There it is. Okay, so this is from, um, this is from, just to give him some credit here, Supala, so go ahead and subscribe. You subscribe, guys. I'll be sure to subscribe as well. This is a good tutorial here. The problem is, is he has an updated one. So we're gonna go to GitHub here and get the new script. It's this one, V2. So I'm curious if this one is going to work better for us. So let's go ahead. Because I think he mentions it, the other one was having bugs and issues. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, what was that? That was the Disable a far away V2. So take that, paste it in. There we go. Save that out. It looks like what we have a we have a problem here is activation script add. So let's double check something here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a lot better for us. Let's save that out. I'm already seeing it. It looks a little bit different and it's actually removing the things that were bothering me. Um because I actually made some tweaks myself. Let's snag this one as well. That's the object activator. And, yep, it's the actual position. Good, good. Okay, so let's take a look. Maybe this will fix it. I sure hope so. Um, that is the item activator. So let's open up that one and then paste it in there, save it, and take a look. So hopefully these will fix our, our problem here. Okay, no errors. It's very simple script, very, very simple script. All this does is, this has a list of players. The list is generated from this script. So if an object has this script, it's generated. And then what it does is it just does a quick for loop and it's within a coroutine. So it's like, um, it looks like it's every millisecond or something. It's just checking to see, okay, is this near the, the, play, the player? Um, hey, I think I might have an, a problem here, guys. It's looking for the wrong game object. That might have been a problem. It was looking for the wrong one. Player controller game object. Ooh, I think that may have been the problem all along. I think it was looking for this. When in reality, it should be looking for this little friend here. So that may be the issue, but maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, let's paste it. So there's that, we're good, save that out. Let's jump back into Unity here, make sure everything's still working for us. We have the object, a object activator object, <laughs> item activator object. And it says if it's 100 units away from the player, it's gonna disable the object, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look here. So right now, currently, we have like things like these tables here. Um, yeah, it's so like these chairs here. Those should disable once we hit play here, but they should reappear once you enter into their zone. So let's make sure this is working properly.
All right, let's try it out. First, let's check. Are things disappearing? They are not. Because I can see one right there. Yeah, that's not working. Okay, let's double check. What we're going to do is we're going to set the unit size to be much smaller and we'll, they should be able to pop in and out of existence in front of our face. Okay. Uh, item activator is currently looking for an object called player. Wrong. It needs to be looking for a game object called controller. Or better yet, we're not going to do that. We're going to have this serialized. Okay. So that's a private variable, but we do want it to be serialized so that we can just drag it in right here. I think that's probably the smartest move to make. I don't really want to dig around for the object. Um, although to be honest, sometimes we're going to need to do that, so never mind. We're going to look for an object that's tagged. Let's see here one sec. As player. Ah, what am I doing here? What we want to do. Let's do this. We're going to go back to that script and we're going to do it the way we had it. I think that's the smartest way to go. <laughs> um, whoopsie. Control Y. And then right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, player, and this isn't serialized, player equals, and we're just going to do game manager dot player controller dot game object okay we'll make sure that we import the proper uh, dependencies here or uh, namespaces uh, player controller dot game object that should do it uh, let's be sure that we debug it though debug dot log I just want to make sure that it's the right one let's debug it and I'm gonna have it say game object is and we just want to double check that it's finding the right one for some reason. I don't know why it wouldn't find the right one, but we just want to double check. Uh, let's check. That's a good, that's a, definitely a good check. So let's bake everything. We're going to bake the occlusion culling. You might be right. You might be right. Um, if for some reason things moved around, we might have some issues with the occlusion calling. So that's something to consider. All right, let's take a look. Uh, Hector, can you um, send Loveface to permanent hell, please? Thank you. Hector, sounds are awesome, dude. I haven't done the spider ones yet, but the doors are awesome. All right, let's keep uh, exploring here and see what's going on. What is that? Oh, that's, that's, it. okay. <laughs> you get paranoid. Uh, there's this thing that happens in game dev where when things start to slowly break down and more and more bugs and glitches appear, you start to think that your game is exploding, like it's literally dying. And so you're paranoid and you're looking for everything. So what the fudge packer, what is that? Okay. So, some objects are not here. How oh, strange. Some, what? Yeah, some objects just aren't showing up. What on earth? Let's move you. Let's go back, take a look. Hmm. Look at that. He appeared, that's right. Spiders are reappearing properly because they're disappearing as well. Huh.
And I'm not seeing any null references except null reference exceptions. Game object is controller. Okay, that's correct. So that's that's right. Um, now the next question is, okay, Thomas, what what happens when you remove anything like this? These setting active and to false and true. What happens then? Um, we'll see. It's unfortunate. I don't want to deal with this kind of stuff, but things get so slow and it's just not worth sitting around with a slow version of your game when you can easily just hide objects. Hector, don't try and match the don't try and match the doors to my anim the sounds to my animations because the animations aren't done yet. So I'll match whatever you do, I'll match it to, to look like that because you've got a good sense of pacing. So I'm fine. You don't need to do that. Let's get let's move on to the next sounds. That would be great. Okay, so let's see here. Move this. See, everything is so much slower. It's at 30 frames per second now. So now everything's perfect. How weird, hmm? I will say, I wonder what would happen if they were set to kinematic, you know? So it's not as easy as we thought. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, maybe they don't have an LOD group. But even still, would an LOD group solve the problem? You know? What do you guys think? Because they're not being called out. They're not. So maybe, maybe an LOD group would help. That's something to think about. So we can just let's go ahead and quickly add some LODs, guys. Um, we'll call out some things. So calling it about like that is fine. So like 4%. And let's just add the renderers. So doot, they'll call out. Doot. That's fine. So let's just, let's do that really quick just to be sure. I, I see no reason why we should have. Does occlusion calling, really quick, does occlusion calling only call out the static objects? I don't think that's true. Let's visualize it really quick. Let's visualize our occlusion calling. Okay, no. Okay, so L adding LODs would be f like relevant if we were outside, but currently we're not outside. We're inside. So the occlusion culling is doing all the work for us already. So LOD groups aren't going to solve the problem. Something is going on with this item activator script. Okay. So, I mean, we could check. We could set this to, to 15, and it's going to show us what's going on, hopefully. They're not popping in and out of existence. 
Oh, that's because I need to fix the script. So let's fix the script really quick. And Jason, you said there's an optimization we can add to the script. Let's do that once we figure out what's going on here. Um, so this is what it's doing. It's running a for loop. If the count of the active op items is greater than zero, good. Then for each of those items, scrub through. If the position is greater than the distance, um, then if the item doesn't exist, remove it. But if it does exist, set it to false, okay? Um, I sure hope we're not renaming objects here. That might be what's going on. No, we're, I think we're good. The save system isn't, isn't interfering. Otherwise, remove them from the list and set that, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. These needs should probably be combined. Yeah, um, set it to true, okay? The yield, it's, it's basically, just, this just slows down the for loop. Um, if it's greater than zero, then remove the item. Ah, yes, this happens after, okay. So that's adding it to the remove list. And then they get removed, okay, cool. So then, then it waits and then it adds to list, okay? So the next, you know, the next thing I'm thinking is maybe it has to do with, you know, the objects, they're put to sleep, that's good. Um, you know, but I'm thinking, what about um, if we made them is kinematic equals true and then use gravity equals false, what would happen then? Because I feel like this ha this is a rigid body problem. Hmm. It's not working. Did I did I fix it? Let's try again. That's set to 15. They should be disabling, but they're not. That one's gone. Oh, huh. What is happening? My goodness, guys. Things are just deleting randomly. Wow. That's not good. That one is doing it. Huh. That's so weird. What is happening? Okay, we have two of them. Disable if far away. Player equals controller. That's correct. It's placed based on the pl par player position. Hmm. Hmm. It's funny, it was working better before. You know, hmm. yeah, it was working better before. Let's take a look. 
now it'll it'll probably work just fine. Okay, that's working properly. And then if I make my way towards these, they should reappear. See? So that's doing great. Even the enemies look, they disappear and then respawn, which is really great. Um, let's let's make our way towards the library now and see what's going on. So the old script was working better. I don't know why, but it was. So let's make our way to the, look at this. It works great when it's a small number. Cool. And this isn't really, we're not look, we're not really worried about the renderer. We're actually worried about uh, the the game object itself entirely because it's got a physics object on it. It's got a script on it. Okay, so these guys, for some reason, are lost. They just disappeared. Strange, very strange. What about over here? That's so weird. Where did they even go? Do they even exist? Like this, for example. So that's disabled. Disabled far is far away. It's currently disabled. But now I can I can actually enable it back and it doesn't disable. That's so weird. So there's something wrong with the list. Could there be two competing scripts, maybe? I think I tried it, but I think I removed it here, so let's see here. There's the start script. They're set to is kinematic equals true, use gravity equals false. So currently if I mess with this guy, it's probably gonna fly weird. Yeah. Um <laughs> that's so fun so yeah we've got an issue with certain objects just disappearing um, let's go look at the object pool itself so the object pool should be serialized are you public list I wish I could see the list how do I see a list because I can't see it here No, they're not falling through the floor. They exist, they are right there. And I could show you if I have the carpet. Yeah, they exist, they're right here. They're just getting disabled for some reason. I wanna see that list. How do I show a, how do I show a list in the component? If it is public, it should appear, but it's not. It's public right there but it's not showing up. Hmm. Debug mode? Is that what it's gonna be? Yeah, still not there. Try to re-import the script. I'll get an error. That's what I'm looking for, Jason. I don't know how to, I wanna see what items are being stored in that list. Cause my, my theory is they're getting stored in the list and then removed. For some reason they're being removed from the list. Is 
If the item is not serializable, it won't show up. What do you mean? You might need to make the class of, oh, it needs to be serializable. So certain public variables, even though they're public, they still need to be serialized. Okay, that's fine. Yes, 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 you might be right. Let's take a look. All right, let's try that. So what we're doing here is we're trying to see, it's still not there. Um, we're trying to see what item, yeah, it's not there. Hmm. We're trying to see what items are being stored on this list uh, because these guys, they're appearing just fine. Um, wait, 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 let me think here. Trying to think if there's something I've done. Can we please ban Love Face? Is anybody a mod? Oh, I see. So it shouldn't be in start, should it? Do it, does this need to be? Wait, 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 no, 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 no. I don't know, let's see here. Serialize the class? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I know what you're saying. Um, so it's right here. Yes, 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 yes. So you're saying this right here? Can you serialize a, a class like this? Really? Okay. Let's take a look, Harry. Delete the script. Still not showing up. Really? Okay, serializable. System dot serializable? Okay. So are you saying it goes right here? Basically like that. Let me double check something. Okay, I think that's what you're saying, guys. All right. Cool, thanks, guys. There they are, you guys rock. So let's see what items are being added to this list. This friend right here, Victorian, Ca hey, hey. Maybe it's because they need different names. This could always be the problem. What I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to go to my, I believe it's in my game manager, save manager, remove duplicate IDs. This is cool. This is a script that AJ wrote that makes every game object have its own little name, correct name. So there's that. Let's hit play here and take a look. Okay, spiders appear and then disappear. But the music's gonna keep playing, which is hilarious. On disable, we'll remove one from the enemies following the player. Y'all listen to this music and have fun while I take a look at this really quick. Item activator, look at all this, okay. Uh.
All right, we'll, we'll uh, jump on over here and take a look. Well, that didn't work either. There we go. <sighs> hmm, that's okay. Everything's fine. We got a missing reference exception. Saving and loading got screwy. Okay. Boy, oh boy. So the next question is, um, man, I, there's so many elements though. I feel like there's gotta be a better way to do this, guys. Like, why can't a rigid body just sleep and not be so problematic? You know? All right, guys, this was a really fun live stream. I'm gonna take a look at this stuff and hopefully not bore you guys to death and just come back during another live stream. I had a really good time with you guys today. It was super duper fun. And just remember, guys, um, if you want to, obviously, it supports the channel because, hey, brings in income for the for the studio. But more importantly, this is, could be a, um, very well could be an investment in your future. And in fact, if you're into 2D art, this is definitely a really great investment in your future because I have over 3,000 students worldwide at my bigger program, Full-Time Game Dev, and the reviews are incredible. This is my other course called 2D Art Pro, and it's all about how you can, well, make 2D art just like I did in my last 10 years of making 2D games. I teach everything I know. Um, there's a big sale event, and it started today. It's 50% off. There's only 200 seats available, so if you want to join and uh, take advantage of this program, but also get my brand new program, which is called Pixel Art Pro, and it's everything I've learned about pixel art. If you want to take advantage of this sale, there's seven days left, actually six days and 20 hours left. So enroll now for 50% using the link below. And I will see you guys on the private Discord server. Games like this, this is Pinstripe on Nintendo Switch. This is Never Song on Nintendo Switch. Games like this, I actually just created artwork using very, very simplistic shapes, okay? So I'm gonna teach you how to do stuff like this. I'm not the smartest person when it comes to illustration. So I had to figure out how to use simple shapes to make things look beautiful. So I teach you how to do this. So be sure to check the link below if you're interested. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.